Making a Knife from a Lawnmower Blade, Part 4, Perils and Errors, William Hovey Smith, 2021. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and we are continuing with our work with our knife built from a lawnmower blade. Now, we have it shaped as we would like to have it, but the problem has been the hardening of the blade. And consequently, I've had two previous attempts and the blade would not harden. I could not get the edge up to the proper temperature for quenching in oil to have it harden. What to do? We have three alternatives. The first, as you have previously seen, is to put it in my oven and bring it up to a higher temperature than 1850 degrees and then quench it. When we did this twice before, as you will see in the photos that follow, the center of the blade got up to a desirable heat color that is uh, a yellowish white, but the edge remained red. The thin edge cooled off faster and did not get to a proper quenching temperature. What I should have done is quenched before I ground the edge. That way I would have had more hard metal on the edge of the blade than in the center. Hmm. I could try to reheat it again in the oven as it is now configured at a higher temperature in hopes that more of the heat would bleed to the edge and still remain there long enough for it to harden. Uh, I suspect we would exactly repeat the results we've already twice obtained, so I don't think that's something to do. As an alternative, I could put it on my charcoal forge and we could heat the entire blade there and also quickly quench it by bringing the quenching tube out to the forge out on the porch and complete it faster. Uh, that is a possibility. But I believe we would have exactly the same results. That the edge would cool sufficiently before I could get it in the quenching oil to do any good. Hmm. The third alternative is to take my welding unit and put a rosebud tip on it and heat the already ground edge. And when that is at temperature, immediately put it in the quenching fluid. And that is the alternative that we will explore here. So, I'm sitting at my workbench. We have a vise right here. The welder you cannot quite see in the background. And we are going to use a rosebud tip here. Now this tip is different from a regular cutting tip in that it broadens the flame here and doesn't let it get up to quite the temperature you need to cut steel. But it will heat very fast and very effectively and you can play it up and down the blade as you will see and with some skill and patience get it up to a uniform temperature and then we can drop it in the oil. So, that's the plan. Now, uh, execution may be something entirely different. On the corner of my table, I have a vise and also my bent-up coat hanger. It's going to be used to suspend the blade while I heat it, as well as a torch. So we will go and see if we can get things fired up and get started.
I put it in my straightening blocks and we'll see if we can straighten it. I'm going to put the apex of this at the widest bend. Okay, that is straight. But for it to set, I have to take it beyond that. Okay. So we've got now a slight bend in the opposite direction. We're going to leave it there for overnight and see if that will set. I'm an author and depend on the sale of my books to finance these videos. I mostly do outdoor titles, but I do have some significant business books as well as a new novel. My newest business book is Make Your Own Job Anytime, Anywhere, at Any Age. In this book, I advocate individual entrepreneurship and show how a person can generate their own unique job ideas and act on them to form their own businesses. My new novel, Until Death Do You Part, An American Family Meets Their Sicilian Cousins, is about a family from Louisiana who goes to Sicily for the first time in three generations. And when they arrive on Monday, they unexpectedly find that their two sons are to be married to two women they've never heard of on Friday, or none will leave the island alive. You can crank it up all the way over to here, and you may hear a resounding snap, and that's the end of the good night. Our blade straightening has been successful. And now... Uh, we can proceed to remove the scale and actually uh, finish the knife. But so far, so good. Once again, we're going to be taking the scale off the blade with the sanding belt. Now, one thing that's going on that you may not have noticed is each sanding, each hardening, etc., etc., is reducing the thickness of this blade. So every operation we do to it, it makes the blade thinner and thinner. So we're now quite thin indeed compared to the original thickness of the lawnmower blade steel that we started with. Hmm. And thin blades tend to have more problems with bending and cracking, as you have seen before. So we're going to proceed and take the scale off. We've dressed our scale blocks again by putting them on the belt for a little bit and also our application paddle. So now we can once again mix up our JB Weld steel compound which we know to be very effective mix Okay, that's a uniform gray. That's good enough. Apply. Incidentally, you want a solid block or something to mix this on because it's taking real force to mix it. At 
one of our longer pegs. That's in. Is that far off? I don't think so. Okay, that's two. This is a little shorty. It's going to need some help. Not wanting to go. Okay, I put this back on the drill and refreshing that hole a little bit. I put a little dollop of weld here on the end. And now it should drive in. Good. Okay. Got it in about this far, so it should stick out about that far, so that should be good. Okay, we we'll try some clamps now. to do a little grinding on here so I can get my clamps on, but that's no problem. After we reduce the width of the scales, we have our three clamps on, and we tighten these progressively, and one and then the other and then the other, and go back and back and back again until we get as much compression as we possibly can. And so that needs to sit and I'm not in a hurry, so we'll let that sit all day and look at it tomorrow, and then we'll finish up the scales and sharpen the edge. But thus far, all indications are positive. When I put it on the belt, I did not get the feathering I did before, so I believe we have significantly increased the hardness of the blade. We're an awful long way from finishing, but uh, it's just going to take a while. We're having a real problem with these grips. In that this darkly colored wood here is hard, and you can do a good even grind even across the pins. And not give a nice good surface here to work with. The white wood on the other hand is very soft 
and as you can see it's very difficult to get an even grind across the pins and the wood itself. You see the numerous little gouges here. So I'm going to have to finish this up uh, with hand sandpaper. The uh, machine work is just too, too aggressive for it. You remember on the original piece of wood, perhaps, in a previous video, there was a knot hole. Well, I put this pin in that knot hole, but here is the other end of it, here. And that is dead soft. So we'll need to put uh, probably a filling compound or super glue in it to seal it. But we are working on it. And it's certainly looking a little better than it was, but it's far from finished. I'm using this variable grit strip sandpaper to help round the grips themselves and get some of these divots out as well as take off any sharp corners so it feels better in the hand. And because of the great difference in the strength of the materials, uh, it seems to be the best way to go right now. Our pegs are in and glued and ground, and they don't look all that much out of character with the rest of the wood. So we call that a success, and continue. We're getting very nearly to the last stages now. Uh, we're going to do final polishing on the grips and the blade, and I've got 220 grit on the machine right now. And so this is going to bring up a little luster here on the grips themselves. Then we'll put the blade on the scotch bright wheel. And that will brighten it up a little bit. And also complete the sharpening. It's pretty sharp right now. And so this is really the dangerous part where you're working with a bare blade that you can get yourself cut or sliced or whatever, so be very careful about what you're doing. I'm now going to literally paint the grips, and what we're using is a clear polyurethane. And this will show up the color of the wood well and also seal and protect it because some of this wood is indeed as we now know quite soft and so it needs a good hard coating of something on it and polyurethane is ideal for this purpose be careful and make sure you get the end grains here. Because this is where your grips are going to absorb the most blood or anything else from what you work. I want to make sure I get plenty around that little knot hole there. You can see how it brings out the color of the wood now. I think that's good, so we'll just let that sit there and rest and dry. In part five, I will use this knife to dress game. How much is such a knife worth? If I were to sell it, I'd have to charge about $300 for it to pay for the time and materials. Now this amount of money would buy a very fine knife for many commercial companies that would work as well or better. However, if somebody wants a unique knife with video documentation, this would not be an unreasonable price. For more information on my books, blogs, and 900 videos, go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. 
Purchase my books from Amazon.com and other ebook outlets throughout the world to support this channel. To find out more about my business books, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. To discover how my novel, screenplay, and movie is coming along, go to fatherofthegrooms.net. Until Death Do You Part, the novel is available as a softcover ebook or as an audiobook. Hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Goodbye and God bless.